Okay, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, could you state your name for the record? Jensen Neal Roof. Jensen Neal Roof, and where are we today, Jensen? We are at my home in West Hollywood, California. West Hollywood, we're sit, what, two, three blocks from uh, Sunset Boulevard? Yep, about two blocks south of Sunset, two blocks north of Santa Monica. Yep, beautiful location, nice day. And today is September, I believe, 30th? That's a good question. I think it's September 30th, my, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about Guided by Voices. So how did you uh, get into Guided by Voices? I was in a band in San Diego, college years, and uh, we, we would turn each other on to music, and my buddy Kevin kept playing this, this one band, and I would hear little some lyrics would pop through and some of it irritated me the sound quality of it it irritated me that it was such poor sound quality but I was intrigued by I heard my automated spouse has a bug in her blouse off of Vampire and Titus and that line stuck to me and I, I, I think I said all right who is this who, who's that you're listening to oh, it's guided by voices and then it started to get to ex explain to me that they were old guys you know in their late 30s and that part of the story intrigued me and then I also remember hearing they put he, he got really excited he bought B thousand maybe the day it came out or whatever put the needle on the thing and I heard the, the first song and you know it has sections of it where they accidentally recorded over it and the guitar drops out and I was just kind of mesmerized that they would say that's fine put it on the album I said all right I gotta I gotta investigate this band closer. And I went up to the Tower Records, which is ironically, I can throw a tennis ball at it right up the hill on Sunset, and I decided just to buy for myself the new CD that had just come out, Alien Lanes, and put it in my CD player that connected through the cassette player adapter, and just decided I'm gonna drive around LA and just listen to this new album. Stop at stoplights and read the lyrics, and I was hooked in no turning back right then and there. Hook, line, yeah. and sinker. Was there, a, uh, you mentioned, I guess, the number two in the Model Home series. I don't, I don't know if that's on Alien Lanes. No, it's probably... It, but... It's on, that one's on uh, Vampire and Titus. Okay. So, yeah, um, no, it was like, it was just weird lyrics. Like, I remember distinctly uh, remembering um, uh, to seek the blood of precious stones is blasphemy. Just not, you know, kind of nonsense stuff. And, uh, uh, just throughout the whole Alien Lanes album, little, even the song hit, you know, that, what the hell, that's 21 seconds long. I was hooked, I, this is for me, I love the 28, I was super into the short song aesthetic part of it too, and the whole idea that you don't have to have a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, middle eight, instrumental, back to a verse, and then the chorus is repeated three, four times for a total of three minutes and 45 seconds. You don't have to do that formula. You know, it was kind of rewriting the rules of rock and roll. You don't, you know, you don't have to be in Los Angeles. You don't have to be in New York. You can be from Dayton. You don't have to be young. You can be old. I loved it all. And, and then, of course, the more you dive in and start reading about the fact that Robert Pollard was a great athlete, there's just so much to the story that makes it a unique rock and roll story. And it, I was all about it. Fantastic. And then decided I've got to get, I've got to buy everything that they've ever done. And couldn't believe that there was a, you know, a backlog of, you know, numerous LPs and then just a ton of seven inches that I got, you know, as many of those as I get my hands on. Yeah, I was a, a collector immediately. Very cool. Yeah. Was uh, in those early days, maybe on Alien Lanes, did you have a favorite song at that oh, point? Oh, man, it was, it, it was... The ones that all, I think uh, King and Caroline always jumped out at me. Of course, I'm hearing songs like Game of Pricks and Motor Away for the first time. So, of course, you latched onto those. Um, always Crush Me, uh, uh, Chicken Blows. I mean, there were so many, but also just the little in-between songs. And some of the names even escaped me. But just the, the little in-between song ones that connected the hits, if we want to call them hits. It, it, the whole fabric of the whole thing. That was an album that I felt like... Maybe not all GBV albums I feel this way about, but that's one where I feel like you can put it on, let it play all the way through, and it, 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 it it's perfect. Would you say that's your favorite GBV album? Yeah, that's always been my favorite. To this day? Yeah. Pollard Project, Kid Marine, GBV, Alien Lanes. It's just perfect. Kid and Marine. I also love the fact that it was recorded on cassette. Four-track four cassette, not eight-track, 
just like what everybody else can do in their basement if they want to. So yeah. it's, it, you know. Yeah. Kid Marine's a great one. Do you have a, a favorite song on that album? Yes, I like um, Town of Mirrors. I love Town of Mirrors. And then it flows into the two tracks that close the album, which are mesmerizing as well. But Town of Mirrors is my favorite on that album. I really don't know that song. They put it in the set list a few times. Uh, I know this party hat. I know this. Uh, I believe the story of ratings will bring the honest man down. You know that song? Sounds familiar, yeah. And then it goes, oh, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. And then, yeah, that, and then it flows into, uh, uh, Island Crimes, I think. Or no, it flows into uh, Power Blessings. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Guided by Voices song or just? I think probably everyone thinks I'm a rain cloud when I'm not looking. Cool. Mm -hmm. My favorite Pollard song is Soldiers of June. It's a Circus Devil song. Yeah. But GBV, everyone thinks I'm a rain cloud. Very cool. Is there a favorite lyric or a few lyrics that you kind of latch on to or oh boy you know that's one I'd probably have to think about yeah so many you know and then oftentimes it's just a line from a song or something and but they pop into my head you know as it is I'm sure for all of us addicts like hourly minutely almost just a line pops in your head and you you know like off the top of my head I'd, I'd really have to think about that one actually sure you mentioned to me that uh, you would drive down Sunset Strip with uh Ellie and Lane's playing. Yeah. And then stop at red lights and look at the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's how I, I mean, that's how I got sucked, sucked in. My friend, you know, my friend in San Diego tempted me or got me curious with the little facts that he knew that he'd written, read about in Spin Magazine or whatever about the band. And I had heard those intriguing songs. I knew that they were, like I said, old guys. And so I decided, all right, I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to actually buy one of these albums. And yeah, it was, I was, it was, I was hooked. I think I probably went back to my apartment and tried to turn my friend onto it and then and, and just started researching what the hell else is out there. Right. And then at some point you uh, you were so into the band that you started your own Guided by Voices cover band, correct? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So uh, my wife and I moved up to Arcata Eureka, which is Humboldt County, to go to, to go to school. I was She was getting her bachelor's. I was getting my master's. And... Uh, my first year there, I put an ad in the, uh, I think the school newspaper, look, trying to get, I wanted, you know, I was going to play bass, or no, I was just singing, so wanted drummer, bass player, two guitar players for a Guided by Voices cover band, and I didn't get much response, I don't think, when I put that out, but I went on this postal blowfish message board, which some of the old schoolers know about it, it was like the, when the internet first came out, email digests, so you would send a topic or somebody would say here are the tour dates or whatever just a way to either chat about the new album or get information and I put up a thing on there I said just in the off chance is somebody on this list from Humboldt County and wanted to put together a Gotta Buy Voices cover band and by God uh, a guy responded and said I play keyboard so I probably wouldn't be any good for your band but my brother plays guitar and he loves Gotta Buy Voices and they lived in the town of Fortuna which is kind of a rural town south of Arcata about 45 minutes and we, he put me in touch with his brother. We've become best friends. I was in his wedding, he was in mine. And we ended up, not that year, but the following year, putting the band together. We, we, we met, we said, all right, let's do this. Let's stay in touch. And the next year we put up a bunch of posters around town seeking this band. And by that time I had met musicians and I, we were able to piece, piece a few bands together. We ended up having uh, one extra guitar player interested you know, three would have been too many, but he didn't show up to the official band meeting, so that was it. We had our core group of uh, five guys and started playing shows around town, and people loved it. I mean, people went crazy for it. What year was that? That would have been uh, fall of 98. Yep, September of 98. I showed you that poster on the wall in there. We were called the X Supermodels when we played our first shows. We, our first show was actually canceled. I won't even get into it. It was controversial. One of the bands didn't like the poster that we made and kicked us off the bill. So the f actual first show we played was in like on a backyard patio, kind of like this. And uh, we got through about, uh, you know, 
15 minutes, which means probably about 12 songs, and then the cops shut it down, which was kind of a cool, cool intro, cool debut show. You know, the law had to come and tell us no. Yeah, that's the way to do it. And then that. we switched, for some reason, I don't even remember why, we decided to change our name to Tiger Bomb, the name of one of the early seven inches. Very cool, very cool. And how long did you guys last as a band? Through that school year, we uh, made it to the end, and then like people were moving away or whatever, so we just, you know, we made it through to would have been, you know, spring of 99, and that, you know, various people were moving away and graduating from Cal State Humboldt, and so we broke up with a last show amicably, you know, just, all right, we're gonna do one last show, but it was so fun that we would continue to do like reunions, and then new guys started coming into the band to take over for the people that had moved. And uh, we play, I know, I remember we play, yeah, we would play like just occasion, like like once a year reunion shows. And then we um, bonded, I probably through Postal Blowfish with a Portland band called Giant Bug Village that had formed before we were. In fact, I think they're the first God Above Voices cover band. So we went up there, I guess this is before we broke up, we went up and played a show with them. So it was a two GBV cover band bill. And then a couple of years later, we went down to San Francisco at the Edinburgh Castle and played with an LA cover band called Expecting Brainchild. So it was a three GBV cover band bill. That was in like early 2001. So that would have been, or yeah, 2001. So that would have been one of our re, you know reunion shows. And then we just kept doing the reunion shows like every year. We would go up, you know, usually play in Humboldt, occasionally Portland. And so we kept the band going just by by a, by a hair through the years, yeah. And then eventually you played the Holy Grail, yeah, for for GB cover GBV cover band, which is Heat Fest. We we, I, we start, I started by way of the World Wide Web, by the way of the internet or whatever. Found found out about the Heat Fest, the fan festival that takes place in Dayton, where cover bands play essentially to an audience of fans and the band themselves. And I wrote. Heed, who is in charge of the whole thing, and I just I said hello, introduced myself. We have a cover band in California or on the West Coast. Everybody lives everywhere, but I understand that you have this party every year. How does a band audition for it? And his resp his response was, "You're hired." So he invited us to play the 2017 Heed Fest. I asked the guys, "You want to do this? I don't. We're not going to get paid. We're just going to be uh, playing with a bunch of." like-minded people everybody without hesitation said yes we're doing that and uh i flew up to portland i think at least once to rehearse with the guys just so that we, we didn't want to show up and lay an egg we wanted it to be sharp and so uh and then one of the guys lives in our humboldt still he drove up we met there twice and uh got a set list together and then we all uh convened you know through southwest airlines i remember andrea and i flew up to Oakland and they all flew down from Portland and then we rode the same plane to Columbus rented two cars drove over to Dayton and just the second we rolled into Dayton we were like oh we made a, we made the right choice here driving past Needmore Road you know to Goosebumps it, yeah no we were just the second we rolled into the hotel and started saying hey look he's got a GBV shirt on we realized we were amongst I'm sure we probably met you that day too we, yeah. we realized we had made the right choice I was fortunate enough to be there, and I will. Uh, I put together a little video that you and I have discussed yeah. uh, of that heat fest, and I'll I'll post the link yeah. in the uh, comments below. Yeah, but that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm very happy and uh, feel very lucky that I was there to, to, to witness that. Yeah, yeah, you guys did great. It was fantastic. Well, thank you. Um, do you when you were performing with Tiger Tiger Mom over the years? Did you have any favorite songs that you liked to perform? King and Caroline, we used to play that one. I don't know if we played that at Heat Fest or not. Everyone thinks I'm a rain cloud. We did that one pretty good because we would do harmonies that aren't in the actual song that I think give it a little punch. Um, what else? I mean, the, the Fly Into Ashes, kind of a slightly obscure one. So that's the one I played for you the other day. Loved playing that song. Um, there were there were some that were like oddly hard hard to play. like. We kept, we could never get Hot Freaks down. It's got a couple of like extra notes here and there. That one was fun to play because you get to scream Hot Freaks, but uh, but we could, we always screwed that one up for some reason. We actually did play I Am A Tree. Our, our guitar players are tremendous and they were able to pull that one off. 
Um, but I'd say, yeah, I'd say everyone thinks I'm a rain cloud and uh, King and Caroline were my two favorites to play probably. Yeah, so as you know, uh, I have a Guided by Voices cover band with my nephew, the Teenage FBI. One thing I really like about it is when, you know, we as fans appreciate the music of Bob, and then when you sit down with a guitar and actually learn a song, and not just, I mean, you kind of study it to, to be able to perform it, and you develop an entirely new appreciation for Bob, his songwriting, it's like, wow, you know, this is, this is amazing. How did he come up with this? Mm -hmm. You know, you start to think along those lines. And um, it's kind of cool. I like, you know, because we personalized a few of his songs, Razor Bug. We, we feel yeah. like we, we made that one our own. Yeah. Uh, so I like, I like your story about the King and Caroline, the way you guys added some vocals. And the other piece is you find out some songs that you think are easy, like Hot Freaks, are not as easy as you yeah. think they are. There's a little, sometimes just a little, it might just be an extra measure. That, why is that there? And so your brain wants to do fours, you know, things in fours. And why are we why are we doing it five right here? You know that sort of thing. Yeah, we performed the song "Volcano." Tried to at our first gig in uh, Matthew Leclerc's backyard, and I there was a few little things like that that were really tricky, yeah. <clears throat> like that extra that extra measure, like you said. And it's like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, but then you also realize too on some of them. Gosh, this is so easy. Why can't I do this? You know. And I, I mean, the melodies, you know, obviously those are magical and only a, few, a select few people can come up with melodies and lyrics like that. But generally, they're pretty easy, you know. That, that's what made it fun to form this cover band because you knew it wouldn't be too, too hard to get a set list of, you know, like Post of Wolfish is one chord, you know, and stuff like that. Or, right. or, or, or uh, uh, Smothered in Hugs, you just need to know C, C F and uh, B flat and you, you're, you're in business. Yeah, and you have your own album. You've written some songs, and how does yep. that, you know, as a songwriter, how do you, uh, how would you describe Bob's songwriting, or what's your level, you know, appreciation of Bob's songwriting? As a oh songwriter? boy, I, 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 yeah, I, that's sort of a tough one to put into words. It's just uh, not everybody can uh, create an earworm. Anybody can throw throw some chords together and 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 and. and have a melody that moves around but to actually create an earworm that you know that that, that, t that touches people and lodges in their consciousness and uh you know affects them in some way or another just due due to a, a profound melody that's you know that's what his, his i think his everybody he, he's probably one of the best singers in rock history he's probably one of the best lyricists in rock history but for me, it's his melody. I think that's what puts him in the Lennon-McCartney realm, is his melodies. And uh, oftentimes they're over very basic chords, you know, but somehow he, he comes up with them and they're brand new. And, and uh, I think that's what I appreciate the most is these, where do you, where on earth did you get this melody, you know? And, and, and then sometimes a phenomenon when I listen to his music is like, as I'm hearing it, or once I get used to a song, like I can't imagine a world where this melody didn't exist, you know? Can't imagine there was a time before this where, you know, the melody of everyone thinks I'm a rain clown didn't exist. I can't imagine a world without that song. They're just special melodies. I think that's what it is. More than anything about Guided by Voices is those like godly melodies Yep. for and me. Sure, and yep. he, then he throws on some, uh, some amazing lyrics to me, to me. There you go, it just makes it better. Yeah, and then a, knowing the story of the band makes it even better. And then when you're doing it with your friends and you're watching the shows, it just it makes it all, you know, just keeps ramping it up. Yeah. So many things to like about the band, you know? Yeah, to me, Bob's a poet. Yeah. He really is, he's, yeah. he's uh, he knows how to, he's magical with words in some way. And as heck of a singer, you know, as he himself, I think, described him, he's basically a, a, a soul singer. And it, that is true when you listen when you listen to it. it, it it's 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 kind of a uh, he's not a normal not a normal vocalist. Right. Yeah, I guess I can see that. Um, how many times have you seen Guided by Voices live? You know, I tallied that up once, and uh, I, if I was guessing right now, I would say in the like 30, 30 to forty range. Certainly, we would like see them every time they came through LA, and so if that's annually, there's like 30 right there almost. 
yeah, it's got to be it's got to be in the 30 to 40 range. The highlights for me, I went that there's two whiskey a go go shows that are on. The uh, whiskey for those who are watching this is just I can throw a tennis ball and hit it. When I was in college, I saw the the two whiskey a go go shows that are posted on the internet, and those were just the, those were just fantastic. Do you remember the first time you saw Gotta Buy Voices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was right around that time that my friend was. Uh, you know, turning me on to the band. I can't remember if it was before or after I had bought Alien Lanes. Maybe I bought Alien Lanes. I think I bought Alien Lanes after we went and saw them. Yeah, because I wouldn't, yeah. So, okay, so my friend played me those Vampire and Titus and B-1000, and maybe he, part of the reason he was buying it was because they were coming to San Diego and they were playing one of the, the UCSD, where that my friends were going to college, had a, a they, daytime into nighttime music festival called the Sun God Festival. And GBV was slated to perform at uh, like 1 p.m. or something like that. And if anybody, you know, most people who are watching this knows they're not really daytime people. And so they were, uh, you know, it looked like maybe they had tied one on pretty pretty hard the night before. And, uh, but it was just, it was fun to see them. I remember specifically Toby's amp stopped stop uh, working for a good chunk of the, the set and he had to go over there and, and adjust it and Mitch was kind of doing the lead but we we were basically seeing that as a precursor to them playing the Casbah later that night and so we went to the Casbah to uh, see them that's kind of like the San Diego's iconic rock club it still exists it's a great place to see music and I think it was then maybe that I said all right I gotta buy some of their music they played just a you know a, a 40 song set or whatever which just mesmerized us and uh, yeah it was it was fabulous but it would have been I, I consider that the first proper show because the daytime one was just sort of a, a almost like a rehearsal for the night show sure what year was that would have been yeah probably probably uh, I have to go to GBV DB and type that type that in but I want to say it would have been fall of 95 very cool. Yeah. So you got to see that very first uh, classic lineup. Yeah, they were touring. Yep, classic lineup. They were touring to pr promote Alien Lanes. That 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 that's what it was. Touring to promote Alien Lanes, and I w I was living. I was going to school at UCLA, so I would just come down on the weekends, and so yeah, I think I went back home and immediately bought Alien Lanes. Yeah. Very cool. And then the next show I saw would have been the two at the Whiskey, when they were promoting Under the Bushes Under the Stars. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Matt Sweeney played. I don't know if you know who that is. He was on bass because, uh, what's his name, had had um, quit or whatever. Uh, Greg Demos. Greg, uh, no, not him. The other one, the uh, um, Kim Deal's husband. Um, oh, uh, yeah. I know who you're thinking of. Uh, Greer. Greer. Jim Greer. Greer had kind of been the one, I guess, that played bass by playing low notes on the guitar on Alien Lanes. And he was touring with them for like a year, but he right. and, and he was there at the Casbah show, but not at the at the whiskey show. Yeah. Do you have any live? Uh, I think you mentioned a few of your live highlights of seeing GVV live. Uh, any special memories through the years? Oh of boy. Well, the, just the entire whiskey a go go show was uh, Bob was uh, on fire and ch ch at one point chastising the sound man for uh, you know. The mon monitor. He, <laughs> at one point, he got down, and, and 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 you know, put his ear up to the monitor and said, "We have zero monitors, zero." It, he, <laughs> he he was he was. I just want it to be as good as it is in our practice space. That's all I'm asking. Something like that. But uh, uh, specific live memories. Oh man, you got me there. I would have to kind of go through the. I'll tell you one that I wish I had gone to because we would go see them in Portland all the time because a bunch of the Tiger Mom guys moved up there from Humboldt. I want to say in like 2000-ish, they sent Giant Buck Village out on stage to pretend like they were guided by voices. Have you ever heard that story? Yeah. You know, Stan, Stan, Stan and Paul, you have probably met these guys back there. But yeah, they, it, it must have been Robert Pollard's idea. He said, you guys go out and play like four songs. Don't play anything we're gonna play though, or something like that. And they went out and you know, a lot of the, you know, the first timers didn't know and thought it was them. And I, how cool it would have been not only for, you know, to see that, but for Giant Bug Village themselves to be able to go in there and like use their gear and play four songs to a, 
crowded, uh, packed, I'm sure sold out show. At, it was called Burbati's Pan, I think. I don't think it's there anymore, but I would have loved to have seen that. But specific memories, you got me there. I would have to kind of dwell on that and think about that. Oh, that's really cool. I never heard the, I never heard the story about uh, Giant Bug Village going out there. I know I th that. I think, I, you know, we'll get, when we're done with this, we should look up, you know how they have the, all the shows on the GBV uh, database. You can actually look at the set list. I'll bet you it says on that thing, or setlist.com or whatever, I'll bet you it has the, the four songs that they played or three songs, and then maybe in parentheses it says, you know, Giant Bug Village, Got My Voices Tribute or something. We'll look that up afterwards. Yeah, we'll look that up. And I, the the show you mentioned at the Whiskey, I think that that's on YouTube as well. Both shows. Yeah. But like they were offering bands. I think that's, I don't know, they probably still do it, but they were offering bands, hey, we'll record you. you. You can buy the buy it, buy the tape from us for 50 bucks and then sell it to, you know, make copies of it. And that's what they did. So I actually, long before, I guess, the internet and YouTube and stuff, Somewhere I've got an actual VHS copy of one of the two dates. I think they chose the one that they thought that was better, but they're both on YouTube. You can watch them both. I highly recommend it. I, I remember specifically they came out one of the shows with Death Trot and Warlock riding a rooster. You know that song? It's on King Shit and the Golden Boys. Total unexpected show opener. And, and I remember, I specifically remember that. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, let's see. Uh, you told me a very interesting story about maybe the first time you met Bob. Yes. Okay. I know what you're getting at here. They were playing in San Diego at a place called Brick by Brick. This is after the classic lineup had left the room and he had brought in the Mag, uh, uh, Cobra Verde guys to be essentially the rest of God About Voices. They played there, and as is often the case in the smaller venues, you know, hanging out after the show, signing autographs and whatnot, I waited for my turn, and I had seen, we're referencing it again, the Postal Blowfish message board, I call it message board, email digest. I had seen that some of the Dayton locals played basketball with members of Guided by Voices in Dayton every Wednesday, and I was fascinated by this. I knew I was gonna be back in the Fort Wayne, Indiana area a couple weeks later, and so when I got my turn to talk to Captain Bob, I said, I, I hear that you guys uh, play basketball every Wednesday. I'm gonna be back there in a couple weeks. Can I play basketball with you? And he, and he said, sure, we play every Wednesday afternoon. He gave me instructions. When you're coming from Fort Wayne, you'll come down on the 75 freeway. When you uh, see Needmore Road, get off, head uh, to the west, turn right, and uh, look to your left, like quarter mile later and you'll see people playing basketball come come join us and so i said all right I, i'm gonna do it and uh i did just that drove down from my cousin's house in fort wayne and uh, uh followed the directions and lo and behold i saw some people playing basketball i got my like six pack of beer and parked my car and uh, started walking through some yards to get to i was totally expecting a uh, like uh, you know elementary school or something like that and I realized, oh my God, he invited me to his house. So there's about, you know, two dozen, it got bigger as the afternoon went on, but maybe initially about a dozen people hanging out, playing basketball and just socializing, drinking beer. I specifically remember Captain Bob was drinking wine, red wine. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, just gossiped about rock and roll, played some full court basketball and then a game called 51, where you just shoot three pointers and, uh, free throws and his brother Jimmy was there of course won all the games because he's a former college basketball player uh, and uh, yeah it, it was a bunch of his friends uh, and it was I was probably there for like five hours had some beers in this monument club which has now become legendary and uh, one of the best you know maybe the best GBV memories being invited by your heroes to their actual home to hang out didn't realize it when he invited me but that's where it ended up being that he invited me yeah yeah that's a super cool story i love that one and we watched you and i watched the who went home and cried a few nights ago yep and you're pointing out yeah that guy was there that guy was there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. some of the people in that video were hanging out in the back so that's the front patio and the basketball court was in the around back as was the monument club and his daughter came home i saw his like kids come home from school that, yeah, that would have been the case on a Wednesday. 
Yeah. Of course, this was summertime, so maybe they were coming back from, Wherever. you know, football practice or cheerleading practice, whatever they do in the summertime. But yeah, I saw his family, and uh, and it would have been right around the time of uh, the Who Went Home and Cried too. It would have been summer of uh, June of '98, which would have been around the time of uh, Kid Marine and when they shot that video, the Who Went Home and Cried. Yeah, that's a super cool story. Yeah. What other bands were you into kind of prior to getting into Guided by Voices, or what other bands to this day are the yeah. influence on you? Uh, well, go, playing music in San Diego, you know, you were kind of into some, the local bands. I've always been kind of a local band guy, and the, there was a band that also had the short song aesthetic called Heavy Vegetable. They, they only put out two actual albums, and then the guy, Rob Crow, who was sort of the genius of that band, went on to form that band Pinback that maybe you've heard of. They they got kind of worldwide fame. But Heavy Vegetable, I was obsessed with them and they're the same way, like I think that one of their CDs is uh, also 28 songs, like Alien Lanes, exact same number of songs. And I was super into, maybe even more, it might even be 30 something songs, but super into that band. I've also, I kind of got into rock and roll through the classic rock. There's only one band I put above Got Above Voices and that's the Beatles. The Beatles will always be number one for me. In fact, I always say, Beatles, Guided by Voices, everyone else is the way I look at rock and roll. Uh, I love, obsessed with the Beatles. I, it never gets old. I, nothing, you can put on any album now, I'll listen to it all the way through and I won't be tired of it. Love the Beatles. Yeah. Kiss. Yeah. I love Kiss. I, I say suppose, you got your shirt kind of. I suppose for a par, for, for partially ironic, but I also think their music's underrated. I love Kiss. Um, but back, back then, you know, obviously everybody was into the, starting to get into indie the indie rock stuff. Sebado, love Sebado, uh, Flaming Lips, love them, love them, love them. We talked about Robin Hitchcock and the Soft Boys, love them. Uh, uh, yeah, well, the Who, of course, I love the Who. You know, classic rock is kind of what got me into rock and roll, and then from there I started digging around into the more obscure stuff. Cap Captain Beefheart is one of my favorites. Sure. Uh, back, you know, go back then. That's what I was. I say, I was one of those guys that would look at like the the Rolling Stones, you know, top 500 albums of all time, and try to go through until I didn't recognize anything. You know, I want to investigate that. You know, everybody knows the Beatles and the Stones and the Doors and stuff, but I, I started wanting to get into the weird stuff, dig dig into the weeds a bit. But and then of course look my friends bands you know those were my favorite bands too yeah yeah super cool yeah so at the many shows that you've been to and you played heat fest you've met a lot of fans from across the probably across the world any yeah. thoughts on the gbv fan community it's it is really fun to bond with like-minded people who understand you know why you're obsessed with this band and uh, yeah i told you this story too we were walking into the rainbow bar and grill one day and uh, I was wearing that, people watching this probably know exactly what I'm talking about, the, the uh, Pollard Throws a No Hitter t-shirt. And I was walking in there one day with my wife for happy hour and I read a woman's lips. She said, oh my God, he's wearing your shirt. And there was another guy wearing the same shirt, which, you know, if GBV was playing next door at the Roxy that night, then it wouldn't be that much of a coincidence. There was no show, there was no tour. This was just a random sighting. We embraced. And we've become, he's one of my best friends. We've remained in touch. He came back to watch us play at Heed Fest. And I just, let, that's just a small example that we were discussing this weekend that the band can, can ha and it, it's, it's, I suppose it's anything in life, but in this case, a rock band can bring people together. As I said earlier, me and Ryan from Tiger Bomb, just because this guy responded to the post of Blowfish posting, we've become best friends and we wouldn't have if the band didn't exist, we wouldn't have. If his brother Toby hadn't responded to my email, and same deal, I wouldn't have never met met this guy. They would have just walked past us. He would have been wearing some random shirt. I would have been wearing some random shirt. We would have been two ships passing the night, but we saw each other's shirt, embraced. They were actually leaving, and they said, "There's no way we're leaving. We're coming in to have a Miller Light with you." And then we just sat and talked, exchanged numbers, and yeah, I I, I I've communicated with him this weekend. We're we're he's one of my best friends now. Todd Rowland, Todd and Mary from Dayton. They now live in Charlotte. Hope you guys are okay from the storms. Yeah, very nice. I would be here today if it wasn't for... Uh, yeah, you wouldn't be here today hanging out with us if it wasn't for uh, Drive By Voices and Heat Fest. Yeah, that, how would you describe Heat Fest? You've been to it several, you've played one. 
How would you describe it to a, a non-GBV uh, fan? A Andrea, non-mean-spiritedly, non calls it nerd fest because we are nerds. We are into this band. You know, you know, just I, I would put myself at a novice level compared to most of the people that are there in terms of like when the cover bands are playing. Sometimes I'm like, I do not know that song, and I'll look at the room and everyone's singing the lyrics. I'm like, how does everybody know the lyrics to all these songs? It's just I don't know. It's a celebration not only of the band, but almost a sell, almost a justification of everyone's, uh, you know, obsession. Like you said, Barbara said, Barbara Pap, hope you're listening. It's more than just a cult. It, like it's not a cult. It's more than just a cult. It has deep meaning and importance for people. These bonds, you know, the friendships are are, you know, life's short. You yep. you make a friend, it's special. And when you make a friend by way of rock and roll or by way of a band, it's something to celebrate. So, you know, the fact that it is so special, I think is why people, it is so special to bond with your like-minded people. That That's why I think people make a point of carving out their Labor Day, which it's kind of a sacrifice. You know, you don't have too many three-day weekends in, in your work year. People have families, you know, they've got obligations. And the fact that people do carve out that weekend, which maybe normally would be a family vacation or something like that, to do this, I think shows the importance of the uh, this cult to, to people. It's pretty cool. And Dayton is awesome, too, for, for, for so many different reasons. It's cool driving around Dayton. You said, you know, when you see that Need More Road sign, it hits me every time. Goosebumps, yeah. Goosebumps. And then, yeah, just seeing the, I went for a jog one of the mornings that we were there. I went down by the river, being able to see where, you know, through the records and the uh, hunting knife video, even go the church supply, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that Dayton, Dayton Church, church Supply Shop. It is it is goosebump indu inducing. It's yep. silly, but, it, it, you know, to, to get goosebumps over stuff like that. But, you know, people who are watching this understand it's, you know, or, or going by the old house, or just seeing Titus up on the on the street sign. Yeah, it's it's it's. Dayton it's, is a very cool place to visit for a guided by voices fan. It always goes by too quick too. I always feel like, man, I, I I wish I wasn't working right now. I could stay back here for a week easily and not be bored. Yeah, I love the simple pleasures too. I like I like the 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 skyline chili and the and the uh, you know frickers and the. Uh, Mary, Marion's. Marion. Uh, actually, I've never eaten there. I, I've not had that pizza. That's the one that's like a square. You must have had it. I, I, I've seen pictures. You know, everybody always posts Post. pictures of it. It's like the Detroit style or like, like the little squares, yeah. right? Nope, I've not had it. Wow. But everyone talks about it. And then uh, on one of the, on the Hoagie's Pizza, people talk about that one too. I think that was near his house or whatever. Passed it. I saw Hoagie's Pizza, but never had it. Yeah, just the simple, just going out to eat. I love everything about Dayton. That's usually you know, not much kale salad, uh, you know, on the menus back there. I, li I, I like the Midwest cuisine. It's very cool. So I guess um, kind of wrap it up here. Uh, Are there any final thoughts or anything that you'd like to say or, you know, final kind of thoughts on what Guided by Voices means to you or Bob's music? Oh boy. Thanks for the good, keep up the good work. I hope that, the, that this is just the beginning. Every time we think it's the end, we're surprised with a hundred more albums. I hope we're still in one of those vortexes. Uh, Robert Pollard's music means a lot to a lot of people, and I, I hope that whether it's called Guided by Voices or Robert Pollard or Circus Devils or uh, Rip Van Winkle, that the hits keep coming because uh, it, it's life-affirming. So keep up the good work, guys. And that goes for Rockathon and the rest of the band that helps the machine keep going. You know, there's a lot of people that are helping to keep it going, and I appreciate those people's efforts. Well, very cool, Jensen. I appreciate you taking some time to talk to me this morning, and uh, we'll see you at the next show. Love you, buddy. Go Eagles. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs>